The area of science that first really got me interested and inspired was astronomy. It was a topic that looked at those really big questions and tried to put sense to things like what is our place in the universe and how does everything fit together? Gazing up and looking at the stars and thinking about those questions still inspires me. I am still really engaged with astronomy um, through outreach and, and through other things as well. I would describe myself as a space nerd. I drive a bike um, with that's covered in NASA stickers and I always go to a, a talk or a public lecture by someone talking about space. I find it's one of those things that really can sort of tie humanity together, that quest for spaceflight or to understand uh, that there's something more than just us on Earth. Um, astronomy is also really great for outreach, which is something that I also enjoy. Talking to members of the community, especially non-scientists, about some of the cool ideas behind astronomy and, and science in general. Astronomy is a really great way to get people engaged that might otherwise sort of not be so enthused by other sciences. I think everyone can find an appreciation for ideas relating to space. It's something that inherently a lot of people love. And when you talk to them about it, they often say, yeah, I, I love space. Um, I wish I knew more about it. And it's a really good place to start with engaging with people. However, I'm not currently an astronomy major, although I used to be. I graduated with my major in physics and maths, um, and I thought I'd talk about why I switched from the astronomy major, which I had in first year, to what I'd consider a bit more broad, the physics and the math major. There are a few reasons why I decided to switch, and one of them came about just through experiencing what research was actually like in astronomy. I was really lucky to have some research opportunities. I did a project where I was working on CubeSats, and, which are really small satellites that go around the Earth taking data, and what this particular one was taking data of was going to be uh, images of galaxies and looking at the really really faint regions of galaxies to see what we could find there. However once you get really into the essence of modern astronomy research it's less about those broad questions, it's less about wondering what's what's in the galaxies, what's hiding and it's more computer science, data analysis, image analysis, it's really working on a big pipeline because astronomy deals with huge data sets. They have a lot of data. So the research group I was a part of, although they were using data from telescopes, uh, they were just in the middle of Sydney. So there were no actual telescopes being used for a lot of the research astronomy. Um, the data would come from other people in remote locations at, at the big telescopes who would collect the data and send it back to the research offices for processing and there was a lot of processing to be done and I think astronomy now really is, um, it's kind of an office job where you're writing a lot of lines of code to process this data and try to find meaningful information out of huge data sets. It's not that dissimilar from a lot of other modern sort of big data fields. And in a way, actually being immersed in that research environment kind of lost a little bit of the magic for me. I still really enjoyed being there and doing that work. And how cool is it to, to look at pictures of galaxies that no one else has ever seen before because there are sort of millions of galaxies across the images you're looking at. Um, of course some of them are going to be unique. However, when I experienced what it was like to be in an experimental physics research lab, 
it kind of fit my personality and what I enjoy a little bit better. I discovered something that surprised me and that was that I enjoyed being hands-on in the lab. I thought I would always be a more theoretical person but I actually enjoy putting together experiments and not knowing what my results will be, being surprised by the things that I see and trying to figure out either what's wrong or what to do next or how to interpret surprising results. I sort of find that really a lot more motivating. I'm also sort of moving around in the lab rather than just writing code. It's something that I have found to enjoy a lot more and it's going to depend on your personality and, and what you personally enjoy as well. So that's one of the reasons I'm going down more of a physics road. Uh, the other is that I feel the physics major and also the math major are a lot more broad than the astronomy or astrophysics one. I think that astronomy itself is built on a foundation of maths and physics um, but in doing the astro major you kind of restrict yourself almost to the physics and the math that are relevant for astronomy and you're not getting that full foundational sort of coverage. Um, I think that by doing the physics and the math you learn all of that foundation and then can take it and if you want to apply it to astronomy later but then that's not your only option you can also apply it to any other science or any other field in general studying physics sort of as a major it says that you're good at solving complex problems and that you can research sort of these fundamental ideas and applying that is quite easy to almost any research field but also going out and pitching yourself to an employer or someone you want to work with it's I think easier to show that you've done physics and maths and have an understanding of this than to try to convince them that analyzing stars will give you the same uh, skill set um, that's relevant to an industry job and it is in most cases true that an, an astronomy major yes you're dealing with these big data sets and so you can apply that to anything whether it's finance or any kind of startup and it's true but it's harder to make other people understand that if you tell someone you studied astronomy they kind of put you in this basket of someone who just knows about stars and kind of nothing else but if you can tell an employer that you've studied physics or maths instantly it sets you up as almost a more broad or more well-studied candidate whether that's fair or not that's just the way that I've sort of seen it what I think is good advice is to at least at the start of your studies or in your undergrad study quite broad courses and give yourself that range of understanding in a topic that you can then build specific skills onto later. So in this case I think having the physics and the maths and then later maybe for a master's or PhD building on that with specific astronomy or astrophysics knowledge through higher research um, and that way you've sort of started broad and, and gone narrow but you could have gone narrow in, in any field. You could have studied the physics and then gone into a smaller field of physics, into experimental or to theoretical, or applied it to another area altogether. So the research that I'm currently doing is actually applying physics to a biological application. I'm looking at how plant cells respond to pressure and I haven't done any biology at uni, I haven't done any since high school, but I love biology and I'm really happy that I'm able to now work at a cutting edge of research in biology, having essentially bypassed having to study it and do exams in the topic, but still being well educated enough to understand the ideas that are relevant to my project and my project is a physics project. So I think 
starting broad like that and then specializing or, or building on your skill set is a really valuable thing to think about even if you think you're sure you want to go down a particular road at the start you can definitely change your mind i know i have throughout my studies if you have the chance to do any um sort of research projects or internships along the way while you're studying I would suggest doing them in diff as different areas as possible. So you could do one research in astronomy and one in experimental, one in theoretical, which is kind of what I've done, and then actually see which one you enjoy because you might sort of be surprised. I know I was definitely surprised by what I actually enjoyed. It's easy to make assumptions on what you think a particular subject will be like for research and then sort of have an experience that doesn't quite meet those assumptions that you made. It's hard to know truly what you'll enjoy until you actually do it and are immersed in that environment. The three really broad kind of pillars I see um, in the physical sciences would be physics, maths and actually computer science and I think if you have a stretch or a focus on one of those areas then you can pretty much do everything you can you can go into any kind of field because you'd have the ability to take problems and break them down into the exact steps of how to solve a problem you'll be able to deal with data you'll be able to deal with gathering and interpreting results and you'll be able to communicate your results. I think those three subjects and a combination of them really are a good basis for doing a lot of things. I think at each point along the way if you're studying or trying to pursue a certain subject just do at each point what you enjoy so if that's picking a research subject, picking a supervisor, um, trying to decide the direction of your research, do what you find to be interesting in the field or interesting to you sort of at that moment and don't worry too much about how going down a road you, you didn't want to go down because you, you might actually enjoy it and you can change. You, you don't have to box yourself into anything too soon or at any point. Um, all of these subjects that I've spoken about are more similar than they may seem on the surface. They share a lot of common ideas and skills and if you can do one and you want to do something else you can change and apply those skills um, because they're all sort of working towards a common purpose. They're all driven by that curiosity and the imagination to try and solve and figure out the world around us, whether that's in the stars or in, in an experimental lab, they're all pretty similar.